Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Gal Imbar. Gal is the Executive Director of 412 by 972, an organization which connects companies in Israel with companies in Pittsburgh. Uh, Gal, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming on. I, uh, I got to thank you, uh, first of all, because you've introduced so many awesome guests and uh, just brought some great people on the podcast. So thanks for coming on and thanks for uh, all the connections. Thank you. <laughs> So I wanted to ask, um, why why Pittsburgh? Like of all the places to do business with, uh, Israel. Like, well. great question. Uh, a question that I I uh, I uh, asked myself as well. So, <laughs> so uh, early on 2019, I saw the business that uh, was focused on uh, deploying collaborative robotics across Israel, uh, and. Uh, after I saw the business, I decided to take a pause and think and reflect about what is the next challenge that uh, I want to, to be doing. And, uh, and uh, a little bit after I, I, I started reflecting, a, a very close friend of mine who back then was running a, a big nonprofit in Israel that is uh, trying to teach underprivileged kids uh, uh, skills at entrepreneurship. Uh, came back from the States from a fundraising uh, uh, trip and she told me, listen, I met a bunch of uh, really great people in, uh, from Pittsburgh nice. and, and they need someone like you to help them uh, uh, figure things out, so talk to them. <laughs> and when Batsheva, this is the name of the person, says, talk to someone, you talk to someone. <laughs> and she was smart enough not to tell me what those people really wanted. So I, I uh, hopped on a call and met some uh, uh, great Pittsburghers who explained to me that their dream and mission in life is to set up a chamber of commerce between Israel and Pittsburgh. Cool. And as a business person, one of the practices that, uh, that I used to, to do is if someone from a chamber of commerce approached me in a room full of people, I would look around the room and see the person I least liked and tell that uh, person from the Chamber of Commerce, I'm not sure I'm the right target, but you should speak to <laughs> <your business." laughs> That's funny. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, I felt, uh, and I think this is a general theme, is that many people who are doing all kinds of connectors are good people who try to do good, but usually business people are very uh, much value-oriented and if they don't see the direct value of the proposition, they would pass on the opportunity. And most of those kind of initiatives are focused around, let's make a delegation, let's do a conference, and, and we will pay for, for your participation in the delegation or the conference. And usually if people are ending up on those delegations or, co or conferences, usually it won't be the decision makers. So if you send someone who's not a decision maker on a, on a road trip, it's a really great fun for the person who goes on the road trip, but it usually doesn't generate a, a business, uh, uh, business value. So I'm on the call with those guys, and, and uh, in my robotics business, one of the skill sets I gained uh, is being a, a good salesperson, and a good salesperson never says no. So uh, they came up to me with an offer I really didn't like. So I gave them a counter offer. I told them, listen, if you're crazy enough to consider uh, setting it up as a for-profit and generate this much value to the customers, then if you generate this much value to the customer and you're for-profit, it's legitimate to ask for a piece of the value that uh, you're generating. And if you build up a critical mass, then you can become a self-sustained uh, thing. And then instead of chewing up philanthropic money that would help the poor or assist the underprivileged, you make your own money or maybe even you generate excess, uh, excess money uh, uh, back to, to the system. Yeah. But I felt they had like a very, they were very fixed on the, the nonprofit chamber of commerce. So it was a nice conversation and I thought that was that. A few days later, they reach out to me. They say, uh, oh, we really like uh, your ideas, but we have one question. Would it be okay that we'll hop on a call? I say, sure. <laughs> so they asked me, uh, uh, what would you think would generate this much value? So I look at them via the Zoom. 
And I start laughing, and they're asking me, why do you laugh? And I'm telling them, if, if I can be frank, 15 minutes before I hopped on the, the last call, I googled up Pittsburgh to just get a general sense where in the world it is, <laughs> and if I need to fly in, how do I fly in? I, I'm clueless about what, uh, what would generate the value that companies would pay for. Yeah. But uh, uh, we started working on the, on the concept, and they asked me to fly into a, a market discovery process. And we sat down, I think, with something between 30 to 40, uh, I would say, business leaders from around town. And we started crafting the, the value proposition of 412 by 972. And I think that today we have a very definite uh, value proposition. And we, pr we do two things. One is we help uh, uh, businesses either from Israel or from Pittsburgh find great specific sales opportunities in the other locale and we help them execute those sales opportunities. So today with Google, you don't have any challenge to, to find leads because if you're, uh, I don't know, uh, consumer robotic companies who, who specializes at toy stores, yeah. You just Google up the, the, the right keywords and you would find the right uh, targets around, around town. Our, our spe uh, 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 special source is that we understand the culture, we understand the mentality, we, we know a lot of people across town and we know how to reach the, the people uh, uh, to start speaking with. And when I'm saying town, I meant Pittsburgh, yeah. but also in Israel. Yeah. So if you're an Israeli company and you're seeking, uh, uh, you have this amazing, amazing prop tech, uh, property technology. Okay. If you Google up, you, can, you might, might end up with a list of 20 companies, but to get a sense which three of those 20 companies are of the right fit in terms of size, in terms of mindset, in terms of the capacity to do business, because maybe you're a wonderful SaaS platform, but they are just uh, in the middle of implementation of ERP system. Yeah. And if, if you as a salesperson would reach out to them, they would just tell you no. But if I reach out to them through one of their board members, uh, they would tell me, listen, now is not the time. And I will get back to you uh, and tell you, now it's not the time. Let's, let's uh, uh, reach out again in six months. And, and, and having, uh, having that capacity both to qualify and later on also to help uh, uh, structure the opportunity. Because I think in each and every conversation that I set on the sidelines between a Pittsburgh company and an Israeli company, there was a friction of misunderstandings. Uh, uh, the, the baseline example is that Pittsburghers have word, one word that they never say. <laughs> I think I told you what that yeah, word yeah, is. Yeah, I think you did, but just for the listeners. So the word is no. Yep. Pittsburghers <laughs> don't say no. Israelis, unless you tell them no, no, never, never, and no five <laughs> times in a row, they assume there might be a, a path for a yes. <laughs> so uh, a typical, a typical uh, a misguided conversation between an Israeli and a Pittsburgher is that the Israeli would pitch uh, his idea or her idea. And the Pittsburgher would say, well, I'm not sure this is the right approach to, to this thing. And the conversation would go to whatever the Pittsburgher thought uh, might be a better model to work together. Five minutes after the, the conversation would end, the, the Pittsburgher would get an email saying, I'll explain to you why this is the best course of action. <laughs> and the Pittsburgher would get super offended by the fact that uh, the Israeli was told no, and then the Pittsburgher got uh, an email explaining him why he's dumb and why he's <laughs> the, the Israeli guy is right. Uh, so the Pittsburgher would say, I don't want to speak ever with that person. And the Israeli, uh, who met a very uh, polite Pittsburgher who ended the conversation, uh, let's circle back in two or three weeks, yeah. never get back to him, he would say, oh, those American imposters, they are speaking so nicely, but never mean what they say, and, and never realizing that five minutes after the call, he offended the Americans, uh, uh, the, the, the Pittsburgher, uh, uh, in a manner that, that uh, uh, he or she didn't understand. 
So our role is to sit on the sidelines, help uh, both parties uh, interpret what the other party was trying to, to tell them. In many cases, we help both parties in the same process, structure the, the, the proposals and the counter proposals, because in most cases, uh, we make our buck on, uh, or at least part of our buck, or on, a, on, a, on a fee on the revenues that are being generated to one of the parties. Yeah, makes sense. So, so we are aiming to structure something which would be economically uh, uh, good for both parties. So even if there is uh, like a miscommunication and one side is willing to, to, uh, 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 to waive a big chunk of his uh, fair share of the deal, we would uh, uh, tell the, the other side, we are going to tell this side that this is unbalanced and you're going to get a counter proposal that might won't benefit you on the short run, but we know that if you win on the short run, it, it will never be a, a executed a second or, or a third time. So this is this is a part of, of what we're doing, and then and then afterwards, nice. when 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 it uh, uh, when it succeeds, again the fact that that we managed to to broker a, a, a deal between a Pittsburgher and uh, an Israeli doesn't mean that uh, the, uh, the, the purchasing side is going to scale the purchase because maybe the purchasing side has, uh, 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 we, we managed to bring the, the Pittsburgh company to one power plant out of six power plants. Yeah. But if we don't manage, if you don't manage to help the power plant manager uh, 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 in Israel to have a wonderful presentation of the success to show off to the other power plants, <laughs> so they would say we want this service too. Yeah, uh, 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 we might execute a wonderful deal, but with uh, uh, a smaller chunk of the company. So we need to work with both both ends also after the sale in order to help scale the uh, the process. So we've been doing that for three years. A lot of fun, a lot of uh, verticals that uh, uh, we're working with. Uh, it's quite obvious that in the case of Pittsburgh, robotics is a big chunk of what uh, what we're doing. Uh, we have uh, boots on the ground here, a guy called Dror that, uh, yeah. that uh, is based here. I'm, I'm excited to meet. <laughs> you will meet him. And, and, uh, and I'm based in Israel and I'm flying in every two months or so for about two weeks uh, every time. And one of the lessons learned through COVID, by the way, is that when I'm coming into town, I'm most of my time I don't spend on uh, doing business. I'm spending on connecting and hugging people. Nice. And once you're physically connected, then you can hop on a Zoom and uh, close all the, the business issues easily. <laughs> so that makes sense. I'm, I'm I'm spending time drinking drinking yeah. with people and uh, and enjoying the time. I'm enjoying it as well. I kind of wish there was a version of that for like me doing business domestically even, you know, I feel like I could use that kind of support. Like, what did we say to offend them? <laughs> so, regardless of the culture divide, I feel like that's, that's a really useful value proposition. I think, I think that uh, in, in most cases, the challenge is to crystallize uh, the value. And in, in, in many cases, uh, uh, we fail either to crystallize the value or the value is not big enough in order to, to generate, uh, to generate uh, uh, sales. For example, I, I, I met yesterday with a local, uh, local manufacturer of, uh, of very specific processes and he said, hey, I want you to bring me some Israeli customers. And I said, okay, uh, I'm going to send you my terms and we do all the, the commercial stuff, but Assuming uh, uh, we would end up executing the, uh, the agreement, I'm not sure that uh, Israeli customers would decide to work with you because you might not be uh, sufficiently attractive price-wise. Uh, you're manufacturing things that, uh, that the Israelis might uh, rather purchase uh, domestically or in the Far East. So let's, let's do a market discovery process. Uh, I'll get two, three, four leads that might be interesting if they are interested in this. And we'll see, and after, after we test the water, 
maybe we would get to the conclusion that there isn't an opportunity. And maybe as, as we move along, we might find specific niches in which you have like a, 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 a super advantage in uh, comparison to in comparison to Israeli or Far East uh, manufacturers. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I want to get specific, but I feel like you can't talk about that example too. Oh, days, this so. this this specific uh, 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 this this specific thing thing I I cannot I cannot get into specifics, but uh, I have other stories. Yeah, uh, no worries. I, I like to ask deep questions, but. The fact that you said a company, I'm like, ah, he doesn't want to say who it is. So, uh, no, no, no. This is yeah. uh, one of the, yeah. currently we are working with uh, 80 companies. Yeah. Uh, most of them, most of them feel comfortable with us disclosing their names. So on our website, you can see like a, a whole list of logos of companies. Uh, what are some uh, of the people you're working with? Uh, uh, from here? Yeah. Yeah. Like the uh, ones that have said you can disclose their names. Uh, so we're working with uh, uh, Brian Brian Bayer from Hellbender. Inc. Great company. Uh, we are working with uh, Sanjeev and Marcel and uh, Near Earth Autonomy. And, uh, Near Earth Autonomy and Alvin. Uh, we're working with uh, Ivan from uh, Gecko Robotics. Very cool. Uh, we I'm I'm working uh, uh, for three years now with Elegheny Health Network and nice. IMark. That's I'm working awesome. with uh, Dr. Jeff Cohen, who leads the innovation and community development for uh, for uh, uh, Elegheny Health uh, Network and uh, and Highmark. I'm working with Pressure Chemicals uh, that you might know. It's a it's a specialty specialty chemical uh, production. They do a small batch manufacturing of of chemicals. Oh, cool! Uh, so you can get like bespoke chemicals made. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 their claim to fame is interesting because one of the things is, if, have you ever been to a chemical uh, uh, chemical uh, uh, factory? No, I have not. Okay, so I'd like to. So, so if 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 you, if you want to think of a layout of a chemical uh, a chemical factory, on one end there's a there's a truck that comes and pours sand. There's a pipe that you pour the sand into. The pipe goes all along the factory, and at the other end of the factory. Uh, uh, there's gold pouring out of the pipe, <laughs> and there's a truck uh, loading the, the the gold and and drives away. Yeah. But but the challenge in chemical uh, in in chemical uh, in the chemical industry is that when you develop a, a new compound, you develop it in a lab in a small uh, in small vessels. Like uh, you do two grams of the thing, yeah. uh, hundred grams of the thing. And then when you're talking about uh, about a factory, you do batches of one ton or a hundred kilos, Holy and you balls. produce a few tons a year. So the question is, how do you how do you pilot and how do you scale up? Yeah. Because when you pilot and you scale up, you need to take a big risk because you might. Uh, There's a lot of ground in between a hundred grams and a you know, hundred kilograms or a thousand kilograms. So so this this company this company that is based in town, it, uh, their special sauce is that they have a lot of small scale small small scale uh, equipment of a very wide variety, and they would do anything from the, the few kilograms to up to I think uh, uh, four tons. Of, wow. of of a batch, yeah. but but so so a lot of companies a lot of companies are reaching out to them and asking them to 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 help them start the scale and then and then if, from a marketing perspective, you think there would be a demand in the market. You need batches of a hundred kilograms uh, for the coming year, maybe three or four batches. If it works well, next year uh, you would need five hundred kilograms, uh, maybe six batches. If that works well, you decide to build the plant again with the, the, the truck from here and the truck from there. Yeah. But to get that phase, or in some cases, you have things that you know that the customers uh, are, would like small, uh, small amounts, but this is a strategic customer who tells you, if you don't make me the small amount of this, I won't buy the big amount of that. <laughs> so, so you won't set up a whole a whole production line for this specific compound. But you need to get them the small amount to lock down the bigger so, deal. So it's so it's 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 called the pilot and scale up uh, 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 services. So one of the works that we do is that we are seeking Israeli Israeli uh, uh, chemical manufacturers that need that do have a very specific needs. By the way, again, in terms of a specific value, there are similar companies who are doing the same things in India. And in China, for half or a tenth of the price, the question is: uh, 
if, if you develop uh, an innovative compound, yeah. you don't want to go produce it in India or in China because you are afraid that it's going to be uh, copied. Yeah, makes so sense. You, you want to keep the intellectual property in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So these are these are some of the some of the companies from around town that we work with. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's quite a portfolio, or a subsection of a bigger portfolio. And and in Israel, uh, I would say. One of the things one of the things we see is that the profiles of the companies that we work with in the states and the companies we work with in uh, in Israel are quite different. Uh, so, what are some of the companies you're working with on the Israeli side? I guess just for contrast, there. Uh, so, first, some of them you spoke with. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Shlomi. Uh, Shlomi comes from Brinkyu. Yeah. Shlomi from Brinkyu is is a wonderful example for a uh, uh, big. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, is a wonderful example of, of someone which I I am sure that that could provide value to Pittsburgh, but so far we worked hard and we haven't found the right partners for uh, Shlomi Round Town. Uh, but uh, uh, usually those companies are uh, north of hundred thousand dollars of annual recurring revenues. Uh, one of the big differentiators between Pittsburgh companies and Israeli companies we work with <coughs> is that Israeli companies never look at the domestic market as their target market. It's you mean the market in Israel? When you yeah, say domestic. the market in Israel is good for uh, uh, learning, learning the, the trade, but, but it's, never, it's never the target. Because it's small. It's small, yeah, it's, 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 it's small. Uh, whatever you figure out how to sell in Israel, you can sell, you can sell in the States a hundredfold. Uh, so, but, but again, it's in Israel, one of the, the, the interesting things in Israel is in Israel, uh, people are very open to work, not with half, half-baked things, with yeah. not-baked things. <laughs> so so you, you, you can come up, you, people are very open to, to experiment with things that don't really work. So, so you can come up with your concept and find design partners in Israel and develop the, the product to, up to a certain point. And then when you want to scale, you, you reach out to, to, to the states. So uh, uh, we don't work with companies with less than $100,000 of annual recurring revenues because below that, usually the product is not well defined enough. That makes sense. But, but once, once they pass that threshold... What differentiates a value recurring revenue from just a revenue? Just to... Because in some cases, uh, uh, you get an NRE of half a million dollars to solve, okay. to solve a very specific uh, pro problem to a very specific customer. But if it's something that's needed annually, time and time again, that's considered value. Uh, so so, so if, if we get into the details, my pitch says either $100,000 of annual recurring revenues or accumulated sales of over $1 million. Okay. Which means that you did four NREs, uh, yeah. uh, and if you, you've done four NREs uh, with some special thing that you've done, so it means that you have a, a, an interesting intellectual property. Um, that makes sense. So uh, other companies we work with, uh, for example, uh, f from Israel, a company called Wellbeat. Uh, Wellbeat. They, I don't know them yet. Uh, you don't know them. I, I, I didn't introduce them to you because they are not like robotics specific. Ah, fair. Uh, but but uh, Wellbeat is uh, developing, is developing uh, a system that identifies the motivational buttons they need to press in order to make you do things. And it's oriented, it's oriented for the healthcare. And for example, if you need to take this pill at eight in the morning, you could get a reminder, take this pill. Yeah. But if, if, you're, uh, uh, if you're a very uh, conformist person and the system understands that you're a conformist, it might tell you, Tell you, listen, all your friends are taking the pill <laughs> at 8 in the morning. And, and if you're, uh, if you're uh, a very individualistic and you need to make your own decisions, it would tell you, listen, you can take it at 7, at 8, and, or in, at 9. But uh, if you take it at 8, this is the optimal time to, to take it. And you will make your own uh, 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 intelligent decision on, on taking this uh, thing. It, it sounds funny, but uh, uh, for example, uh, they ran a, a pilot uh, in a rehab a rehabilitation uh, uh, center, yeah. a, a physiotherapy rehabilitation center in Israel, 
And one of the things that, uh, that they monitored is that uh, people in Israel have a right for, uh, I think, 12, 12 treatments, like along three months. And, and if I recall the, the statistics correctly, just 25% uh, percent of the people execute their, uh, their, uh, uh, their full plan. So Most, a lot of them just taper off. And, and they, they do few, few treatments and, and drop off the and program. this is covered by the government, too. Uh, the, the, it's not the government, it's uh, the HMO. It's like okay. your medical okay. insurance. The That's medical true. insurance pays for you. It's like you, you get it for free. You just need to attend it. And 75% of the people ends up not, uh, not uh, uh, doing the full uh, uh, thing. Yeah. And, and they provided the system to the uh, caregiver. It's just they, they, they ask you that they ask the patient uh, a short uh, short uh, uh, battery of questions uh, to establish, battery of th to establish yeah. where in the cloud what type what type cast of uh, the person it is, yeah. and it provides the the, the caregiver a do do's and don'ts. Don't speak about the parents. Don't speak about this, and do uh, emphasize this and that. Uh, that's that's pretty interesting. And and they ran it for half a year and give a wild guess how much the, it went up from twenty five percent to how much? Sixty. Seventy five. Oh wow! It's like <laughs> threefold. Or it's they impressive. they ran they ran somewhere in in uh, Pennsylvania they ran a pilot just before COVID on uh, uh, getting people at uh, at uh, uh, people who are. Uh, uh, elderly who are uh, in uh, nursing homes. Sorry, nursing homes. Or nursing, nursing homes. homes. So, uh, getting people at uh, nursing homes to come to social activity. You know, there's the the the, the telephone operator that the trains everyone. Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? Yeah. So nice. instead of that, uh, it provides the script per person. What should the operator tell tell them? And if they don't respond or if they don't come. Uh, they get the, this text or that text that like uh, adaptive. That's cool. So, and and the idea was to get people to social activities. So in that that instance, they doubled the attendance of people just by providing the right messaging. Yeah, makes sense. Think of, for example, how many operations are being canceled because people don't listen in to the instructions of when to stop eating before the the operation or other things. So yeah. So, uh, uh, for example, this is this is uh, this is a company that we are trying to bring to town. Uh, if we, we if we are staying on the healthcare side, uh, there's a wonderful company who piloted in town uh, called NIM. NIM. They they look at the text that the doctors are writing after the, the meeting with the patient, yeah. and they understand the text well enough in order to extract the insurance code. Okay. Oh, cool. uh, so to so the the provider can charge the the payer for the code and which probably saves a ton of admin it's 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 a ton of admin and also it's an admin that is scarce there aren't enough coders like human coders to do yeah. that and the amazing thing about this it's it's called uh, explainable ai it's not uh it's not uh ai that does it statistically but it looks at the sentences and understands the subject and the object and the relation between them. And if it fully understands the paragraph, then it, uh, it provides the insurance code and it provides the logic explaining why it decided to give this code to, to that thing. Nice. And currently it makes about, it, it succeeds about, uh, in about 50% of the cases, but, but it understands if it's, if, if, if it if it's sure that it got the right code, so it's like a two to one force multiplier for medical coders. So so the idea is that it deals with everything it understands and everything that it doesn't understand, it still sends to the human coders. Yeah. But every step it takes in being becoming more intelligent, it 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 uh, uh, that when they started they did like 20, 22 percent, and as they, they they have on their payroll like a uh, uh, thirty. Uh, English linguistics oh, that cool. are like uh, uh, finding all kinds of uh, you know tricks and uh, and algorithms <laughs> to to That's extract meanings uh, uh, from things. Currently, they are focused on uh, emergency room uh, uh, things, but they are going to expand to other to other uh, uh, domains like Only those linguistic degrees can earn some money. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> 
So, so uh, 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 these are some of the examples. If, if we jump into if we jump into ro into robotics, so in robotics we we do have few uh, Israeli robotics companies, but uh, I think more interesting is that uh, uh, when I was speaking with uh, 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 many uh, roboticists around town, I understood that there's always uh, a need for more uh, uh, talent. So I decided to try and go seek boutique services in the domain of robotics. For example, uh, uh, user interface in robotics is very different than user interface with regular software. Yeah, look at that. So, for example, uh, uh, on our portfolio, there is a company with a lot of experience of, the, of doing uh, user uh, interfaces for robots and for drones applications. Uh, we work with a robotics engineering company that has uh, 30 years experience of doing uh, a variety of uh, robots with, uh, let's say, with focus on the, me of the mechanical aspects of robots. Yeah. We have a company that does uh, uh, electronic electronics design. So you need you need someone to design you. Uh, uh, now, when when I'm speaking with uh, with uh, potential clients in Pittsburgh, I'm telling people if you have a, a core need, don't speak to me. Go and recruit a person into your team. But for example, if you need technical uh, technical uh, writing. Not all the time, just in certain peaks. I'll get you an Israeli company who is uh, all about technical uh, documentation. They employ over a thousand people and serve, I think, more than half of the hardware companies in Israel. They do their uh, uh, technical documentation. Sure. So, so, so the, the idea is to match to match uh, 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 very specific needs. To the, that you have with very specific boutique uh, providers. That's awesome. So that sounds like a pretty valuable uh, proposition. Yeah, I mean, I would say also just, you know, as a business owner, I mean, the sales proposition is huge too. So, I mean, if you could help my company sell internationally, I mean, from any country to any other country, I mean, that's, that's huge. I mean, that's, that's incredibly daunting as somebody that doesn't do a ton of international business, you know, and I feel like that's universal. The fact that you're focused, you know, in, in what direction you're selling, what services to what companies between Israel and Pittsburgh, I mean, I think just increases the expertise or at least the perception. It's, it's a great business model. I, I think that the typical American company, uh, in terms of uh, expanding, uh, growing the business, usually the easiest, the easiest uh, way to, to uh, operate is telling your uh, salesperson drive ten more miles, <laughs> south, east, west, or north. Yeah. Uh, and and on one hand, this is the the easiest path. On the other hand, when you're a one million dollar sales company, to start dealing with international clients is I I would say it's not easy, but it's rather easy in comparison for a hundred million dollar company who sells only to the states and now needs to start dealing with its first international customer. And when you're a hundred million or a $50 million company, and you have a, a crazy customer from abroad that uh, best case scenario, send, you'll pay, uh, sell them $100,000 this year and maybe half a million next year, nobody in engineering and in R&D would have the bandwidth uh, uh, and the patience to deal with that customer. Yeah, makes sense. I, I think that what people find uh, uh, and, and, and on the other hand, if you're a Pittsburgh company and I come to you and tell you, listen, there's a wonderful opportunity on the other side of the globe. It's a different legal system. It's a different language. It's a different culture. It's a different <laughs> whatever. And you have the capacity to, to, to get your next uh, uh, sales target uh, 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 across the, the state line or across the, the river. Why should you work with me? Yeah, that makes sense. So, so uh, uh, one of the things we figured is that uh, we, we don't come and give general pitches or saying, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, we have wonderful clients. We come to you and say, okay, you're uh, providing this uh, unique uh, uh, component that could be deployed in, uh, in uh, Homeland Security uh, applications. 
I have uh, 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 I have uh, intimate relations, close relations with uh, the guy who runs the open innovation team at uh, at Elbit, which is one of the big Israeli free McDonald Douglases. Oh, cool. I'm working with uh, the guy who runs the robotics things in Rafael, which is the uh, second uh, one of those uh, two. And I'm in close touch with three, uh, I would say, division leaders in uh, in IAI, Israeli Aerospace Industries, which is the third one. <laughs> so, so, and and I see your technology, and I'm aware of several projects that I cannot disclose because they are classified. But I'm aware of projects in at least two of those three companies that your technology might fit in. So, if we work together. I, I don't promise you a uh, result, but I, I can offer you uh, uh, three, three leads that I know that I can... Oh, that's that, an interesting that, way. That, that I can yeah. qualify very quickly uh, uh, the need. And if there is a need, it's going to take maybe a half a year, maybe a year to, to get it from, uh, from uh, uh, an opportunity into a sale. But you will be involved and you will see. And, and again, when, when you look, for example, at this opportunity, if you're selling to Elbit, Elbit uh, sells just, I think, five or ten percent of its sales in Israel. Ninety percent of its sales is global. So, so the idea is not to sell into uh, a, a, an exotic, uh, faraway land, but to sell to an integrator who sells globally. Yeah. So, so from your aspect, this is a, a, a global sales opportunity. Well, not to mention, I mean, if a lot of these opportunities are classified by their very nature, I mean, there'd be no really other way for somebody to find these things unless they knew somebody else who knew somebody that was already in the know there. It's kind of an interesting way to broker a deal. Yes, and if I would Because someone like you would almost have to overhear both sides to be able to put it together. I'll give you an example, but okay. without disclosing the name names of the companies. Sure. I'm speaking with a Pittsburgh company, uh, and I'm talking with them about the specific uh, homeland security uh, related uh, uh, company. And they, say, and they say, we know those people, we met them a year and a half ago, they said they are not interested. I'm, I'm telling the Pittsburghers, just give me the name of the person you spoke with, and, and I'll reach out to him and, and check if maybe a year and a half have passed, maybe they do have uh, uh, an interest, maybe maybe uh, there's some miscommunication because what you're doing seems very valuable and I know these guys need the, this thing. So they end up giving me the phone number. I, I'm, calling this, I'm calling this guy and asking him, uh, uh, do you know these, do you remember these guys? He says, sure, they are doing an amazing technology. So I'm asking him, why don't you work with these guys? So he tells me, listen, I cannot work with these guys because, because, this, because they have like a contract with the uh, uh, US government and, and uh, which, uh, which uh, confines the, the use of the technology. And if we are working with them, then we need to report, uh, report all our uh, deals to the American uh, government and the American government can, uh, you know, uh, put a veto, veto on, uh, on the sale. So I say, okay, I'm getting back to the, the Pittsburgh company, telling them uh, uh, this is what the Israeli guy said. And uh, the CEO of the, the Pittsburgh company says, what? But I told him that this is like a dual use and we have uh, like a, a paper from the, the US government that says that this is dual use and you can do whatever you want with, uh, with this technology. So I'm telling the, 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 <laughs> the, the, American, the American company, the, the Pittsburgh company sent me just the, the certificate, uh, the, the, the paper that you got from the government. He sent it to me. I'm sending it to the guy who spoke with him a year and a half ago. Yeah. The guy gets it on, on it's like texting. It's, it's not even speaking. I'm sending him this, yeah. and he gets to me, oh, this is interesting. Let's talk. And nice. they've been talking for the past few months, and they might uh, 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 reinitiate uh, uh, some, uh, some project that they considered, and they stopped working on it because they didn't have the technology supplier that now they, they have. Yeah. And this is like a classical a, a situation in which Without our, our involvement, two companies met, saw the very proposition of each other, but failed to do business because they just couldn't communicate yeah. in, in, in the most... Uh, 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 another example of, of Israeli, Israeli and Pittsburgh uh, culture. Yep. <laughs> Israeli engineer speaks with, uh, with an American company. 
uh, and the American company is asking them, uh, uh, what parameters do you want uh, uh, for the product? So in, layman, in layman's uh, 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 words, the Israeli uh, company says, we want it uh, uh, as f uh, to be as fast as can be think of, as light as can be think <laughs> of, as quick as you can think of in terms of processing power, uh, uh, in terms of payload, as much payload as, as we can think of, and we want it at, at, at less than three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and and after after saying after saying all this, and I'm sitting on the sidelines, you know, I'm 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 keeping face, but I'm laughing. This is like the the the, the obvious. Uh, 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 pardon my language, stupid, stupid in yeah. terms of, of orientation. Uh, well, it's like really, a good, it's fast, cheap chart. Yeah, the, the, the Israeli engineer who says, who says uh, I, I want everything and I want it cheap. Yeah. And, and the, reaction, the reaction of the, the Pittsburgher is, is to try, try to tell the, the, Israeli, the Israeli guy uh, that $3,000 per... Ah, and, and, and they are not sure how many units there they are. They, they, now they want two or three units. But if it's going to be a blockbuster, it's going to be a blockbuster, uh, and, and and so it's on. not enticing to a service provider. Yeah. So so the 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 Pittsburgher is starting to to uh, to haggle with the Israeli on on how on on uh, that three thousand dollars is not a sensible number. The number should especially be, not for three units. Uh, yeah. The number should be this or should be that, and and, and so on. And, and when I'm sitting on the sidelines, I'm taking over the conversation and, and, and telling the Israeli guy, listen, we can promise you the best, the best trade-off between uh, uh, weight, performance, price, blah, 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 all these things. Do you have the final spec? No. So when you will have the final spec, we'll, br we'll bring you the best offer you can get in the market for the, the parameters you, you, would, uh, you would decide on. Okay? Okay. The Israeli is happy going off the off the call. Then I'm 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 hopping on the call with the Americans for uh, post processing the, the conversation, and they are telling me, listen, we are not willing to 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 pay to to work for three thousand, for ten thousand, for thirty thousand. I said, okay, uh, uh, for uh, one hundred and fifty thousand dollar per uh, uh, per unit, will you be willing to to work uh, for three units? They say they say okay. So I, 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 I tell them, okay, so the, so the deal will be uh, $5,000 per unit plus half a million dollar NRE. Yeah, makes sense. And they tell me, listen, the Woody paid a half a million dollar NRE. I say, I don't know if he will pay the half a million, but if he won't pay, he won't do that. But he might, he might be able to, to, to have the, 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 the good excuses to get half a million dollar NRE instead of uh, instead of uh, of uh, 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 if if you price it thirty thousand dollars a piece, you lose money and you'll be upset and uh, and and everybody loses. So yeah, this is a uh, this is a typical communication. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Did the deal end up closing? Just like you asked. Sorry. Did you end up closing that one? So one of the interesting things that, uh, that uh, we learned is that we are serving 80 clients, about two thirds are Israelis, about uh, one third are, are Pittsburghers. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, currently we have statistics, I think we closed so far 15, 15 deals. Uh, uh, and, and whenever we close the deal, we measure the time between uh, uh, the time we signed with the customer uh, and the first deal we helped uh, them execute. The current statistics is 14 months. My guess is that five years down the road, when we look back, we would have probably two years from starting to work on, a, on opportunity and the average time to, to fulfill it. That makes sense. This specific, this specific opportunity, uh, it's still in conversations. If you ask me if I think it's going to end up uh, happening, I'm sure that it's going to end up happening. I don't know if it will take nine months or two <laughs> years from now, but it's, it's, it's definitely, definitely will happen because the Pittsburgh company in this specific instance have a very unique value proposition that I don't think that the Israeli customers 
have uh, an alternative for. On the other hand, uh, these are uh, technologies uh, that are being developing, developed for uh, uh, markets that have not uh, fully matured yet. Yeah. So, so if the prototype is ready a year and a half from now and, uh, and the sales start uh, uh, three years from now or two years from now, it still, uh, it still makes sense. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, it sounds like you just have to have patience for these sort of things. I mean, I have to, uh, we all have to have patience. And, and again, what the, I think I told, I told you before, before we, we recorded, uh, uh, before we started recording that there's a, a deal with the Israeli DARPA that, uh, that, uh, that an Israeli company and a Pittsburgh company are going to do uh, a joint project on uh, fulfilling some kind of a robotic component that is super unique uh, uh, to serve a, a specific need for the Israeli DARPA. And they, they are about to get a six-figure six uh, six check to do, this, uh, to, this, to, to do the proof of concept of, of this thing. Yeah. The conversation between the, the Pittsburgh party and the Israeli party had started three years ago. Oh wow! Okay. And 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 by the way, it's gonna it, it's going to screw my statistics because my statistics now is is fourteen months. <laughs> and, and next month, when they get the PO, it's gonna be I think like uh, they first <laughs> met they first met on November twenty nineteen. Brutal. So it's gonna be thirty I don't know thirty four months uh, uh, from. Uh, from first touch to uh, uh, to execution. So that brings you up to like fifteen or sixteen, probably for the average. Yeah. But but on the on the other hand, these things that take time to 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 brew. Yeah. On the long term, I expect them to at least some of them to generate a uh, 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 wonderful sale. That makes a lot of sense. Like we we tried to sell to nuclear a while ago, and I remember I set up four sort of deal flows after a conference with different companies in the nuclear sector. And the first one I met with, um, I, I just remember I got the feeling it was going to be a really long sales cycle. And I kind of felt like they were yanking our chain. And so I can't remember what exactly they wanted, but they were asking for like some NRE prior to a contract for free. And it was to the point where I just was like, you know, get out of here. <laughs> but I talked to the other companies like, oh, this is just how this industry works. Like all of these companies, you know, like we'll we'll string you a lot. It's I, I made some more calls and I found out it was a two year sales cycle on average. And you know, I'm like, Oh, I probably shouldn't have told those guys to get, get bent. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know, probably not I, I since decided to sort of pull our interest in that space, you know, I've kinda of stayed away from nuclear. But it's just interesting. I mean, when you're when you're there in the driver's seat on something like that. It can feel, sometimes it's easy to get impatient and think, you know, this isn't going anywhere, this is stupid. And then, you know, after a while it'll click. I mean, in 2019, I made six trips to the Bay Area where, you know, it was, it was a bit of money. I mean, it, you know, there were exploratory sales trips trying to get a foothold there. And it wasn't until I think 2021 that the trips finally paid for themselves. So, you know, two years later, like, the, you know, brought in enough revenue to cover the cost of all that and then some profit. One of the things that there, there are certain verticals that it's very hard to become a player. And when it's very hard to become a player, if you're a player, you can get a very high premiums because there aren't many players to, to compete with you. Yeah, it makes sense. So um, probably, players get treated that way. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably the nuclear uh, the nuclear arena is, is something like that. Uh, for example, it's a, a lot of hassle to get an ITAR uh, certification. But once you have ITAR certification, because you have less competition, then you can charge more for your ITAR uh, customers. Yeah, and amortize the certification all of all those jobs. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, another another story that uh, that uh, just came to mind. There's a, an Israeli company called Datumate that we work with. Uh, Datumate is taking video feeds that you take from drones that fly over uh, uh, earthwork uh, construction uh, sites. Oh, cool! And and they take the the photos and overlay it on the beam files. The, the beam files is yep. like the CAD of uh, of what architects. The site looks like, yeah. yeah. 
And, and one of the, the interesting things you can do is to, is to put layers uh, one, one on top of the other so you can see the development of a few things. Oh, that's cool. And, and one of the things in, in uh, construction, in construction uh, 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 contracts is that uh, usually at the end of the project, everybody is suing everybody. Uh, because <laughs> is it like every single time? It's every single time because the contractor, Jesus. the contractor is, is, suing, is suing for all the extras that it wasn't fully paid for. And uh, the customer is suing for all the, the things that happened too late uh, uh, in, the, in the contract. And, and if it's a billion dollar or north of a billion dollar project, it's, it's big money. Jesus. So, and, and, and this is, by the way, and, and they don't hate each other because this is the trade. This is the trade. And, 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 and the, the controversy is usually what happened when. And when you have those clips that shows what happened when, yeah. So you you just eliminate ninety percent of the, <laughs> the of, of of the stories. Uh, 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 we Surprise we got, you're not getting sued out of existence by lawyers that want to keep their jobs in that industry. Uh, it's 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 considered a, a, a cost a, the a part of the cost of the business. Yeah. No, what I meant is the drone company isn't getting like so so the drone cease and desist. so so yeah. the, the the drone company the drone the drone company could either work for the for the the. The contractor or for the the for the customer, but but it doesn't matter who they work for. Once once you have this, the timeline is established and you can see what happened. What happened when, and also you get a bonus because you have a real time or rather real time uh, a layout of things. So you can you have a collaborative tool to sign. Oh, there's a pothole over there fix this yeah and, and 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 so on that's awesome so so these guys these guys i managed to introduce them to uh to pen dot uh, nice. and pen dot just uh, started piloting with this uh with this technology and and uh hopefully uh, uh the and, and, and from what i've heard so far the, the pilots haven't uh, haven't finished but the the, the people at pen dot seems to be very uh, happy with that and if they would be happy with that, it might become a standard on all uh, all construction uh, uh, project. And it might save uh, state money, yeah. paying uh, lawyers and paying uh, <laughs> lawsuits. Not a good time to be a lawyer, I think. <laughs> I don't think it's a good time to be a lawyer uh, anytime. <laughs> I have I have a good friend of mine who who was uh, who was a, who, who got engaged and she's a lawyer and she got engaged to a lawyer, and she broke the engagement, and I asked her why did you break break the engagement and she told me listen I thought, ten years uh, ten years uh, uh, down the road and I saw myself sitting at the dinner table, and then I I claim this and he responds this and I and I uh, uh, you, you know uh, uh, lawyers. Yeah, Lawyers always a have claims there. Yeah. I used to hang out with law students when I was at KS Western Reserve University, and those guys were the most argumentative, just the biggest group of assholes that you ever met. So, so, so she broke up with this lawyer and ended up uh, 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 marrying a real estate uh, uh, developer. Nice. <laughs> a real estate developer, this is, the, you know... Well, that's the, synergistic. They probably yeah. can help each other out. <laughs> yeah. But a de developer, whatever you come with, uh, complaints to them. They listen. They say, "Okay, we we, we will fix it. Don't worry." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's why my mom's a lawyer, and so I feel like I, I developed a need from a very early age to, uh, or not need, an ability to argue really well, because I grew up arguing with a corporate litigation attorney, and I like, you know, did you brush your teeth? Yeah, I brushed my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I have three witnesses and the uh, state. There, <laughs> yeah, the deep brush is wet. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore I must have brushed my teeth. Yeah. So. But yeah, no, it was it was pretty wild and uh, but it served me in business. I mean the fact that I grew up having to have those kind of arguments as a kid. I mean when I get to a contract negotiation now, like I'm I don't take it personally and I'm very detail oriented and um, you know, I try not, I, for a while, I think I was kind of a jerk as a result of being in that, that, but I've kind of chilled out a bit and I feel like now it just gives good perspective, you know, and you can sort of turn it off and on and look at things with that lens. So, I don't know, I think it's helpful at times, but I, I kind of wish it didn't have to be that way. So, 
I, 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 one of the things that, uh, that I've learned is that uh, people tend to confuse doing business with, uh, with uh, 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 writing down legal, uh, legal uh, uh, agreements. Yeah. And in many cases, in many cases uh, the business terms are not decided and the attorneys are brought in. And this makes a, a ton of noise and a lot of expenses. Yeah. And one of the things that I insist on doing whenever I'm involved is to get to the one pager, one page in which the parties have all the all the the, the agreements between them, all the, the things they want to, to, how they want to execute. It's like the scope of work, basically. Scope of work or uh, 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 the business terms. Yeah. And once you have that one pager, that is agreed on both parties, you give it to the lawyers. The lawyers come back to you with a list of questions of should we do this or you want to do that. And, and once they come with the questions, what I tend to do is discuss those questions with the person I negotiated with because, because in most cases, the, the answers are either obvious or uh, it means that I either I need to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to give some grounds or the other party needs to give some grounds. Yeah. But if I would sit down and give my answer and gain too much ground, then the other party, when they would get it and sit with the lawyers, they would ask for some of those grounds back. And yeah. then it's going to ping pong. And, and, and one yeah, of the things- Yeah, that can get drawn out. And, and one of the things that owners, that entrepreneurs can easily do yeah. is to sit with each other Look at each other in the eyes and say, "Okay, I will take this risk, and you will take that risk, and just decide who does what, and then give the lawyers just to to uh, uh, cross the T's and dot the I's and uh, and finish these things up." Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and by the way, a lot a lot of the things that we are doing at four one two by nine seven two has to do with it because just for the sake of the example. An Israeli, an Israeli subcontract, a robotics uh, a re related subcontractor has drafted, has drafted an agreement and is about to send it to a, a, a Pittsburgh customer that I worked half a year to, to get the Pittsburgh uh, customer to, to be uh, open to start working with this subcontractor. In Israel, it is very uh, common to ask for, uh, uh, from a small business owner to give personal guarantee for the debt of the company. Personal. Oh, interesting. Okay. In the states, if it's you not. Are, it's 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 not just not. It's it's on the verge of being offensive. Yeah. And and the Israeli guy sends me the draft, and because one of the things that we do is that we ask to look at the draft before the yeah. before before they send it send it to the other person, and I'm looking at it. And I'm, I know that, that uh, uh, the Pittsburgh guy would take offense if he would uh, uh, see this thing. And I'm calling the Israeli guy and telling him, listen, you need to omit those uh, paragraphs. But he, he tells me, but uh, if, if, the, if the American company would go bankrupt on that period, what would I... Who's going to cover our loss? Who's going to cover? And I'm telling him, listen, you're a business owner, you're taking risks all the time. Yeah. I, I can promise you that if you send it as, uh, as it is written now, you won't have any problem. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to walk. <laughs> because yeah. there won't be any PO. Yeah. You want to hop on, a, on, on another call just to get a, a, a firmer, con, a, a firmer uh, a feel that the company is solid, let's do that. But just omit those uh, terrible uh, paragraphs out of the, yeah, yeah, out of sure. the agreement. And, 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 and uh, another example. Uh, an Israeli company is uh, is uh, uh, writing uh, uh, a proposal for a uh, for a pilot. The the guy the, the guy asks me asks me what's the number I think is reasonable for that pilot. I'm saying maybe fifteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand uh, uh, dollars for the for the pilot. He sends me. He sends me the draft. The draft says uh, uh, twelve thousand dollars. I'm, I'm calling up the guy and said, telling him why uh, you asked me. I told you fifteen to twenty. You wrote twelve. Why did you write twelve? Well, the guy made the whole negotiation in his head oh, and decided so. decided that uh, if 
if 50, he doesn't want to lose the opportunity, so he writes, he writes as, as 12. There's something I love that one of my mentors said to me, which is if you walk into the room with your pants around your ankles, don't be surprised if you walk up feeling a bit funny. And I feel like that, I, I think I came to him with that early in my career, like I negotiated myself down. So, okay, so, so I need to cut you off. <laughs> so I'm looking at the draft, I'm looking at the draft and thinking to myself, and I'm reaching out to the, uh, to the American side of the, of the, of the, of the relation and telling him, listen, I'm going to send you the draft. I'm going to send you the draft. Just, uh, it's not officially sent to you. Just give a look at it and tell me what you think. And he looks at it and he comes back to me and tells me they should write $50,000. 50. And I'm telling, I'm asking him, are you sure that you're willing to, to pay an extra, extra uh, 35 or $38,000 uh, uh, to that company? He tells me, don't worry. The purchasing department would call this guy up and, and, and push the, the number, the number down after they would get the proposal because I'll, I'll, I'll approve the, the proposal and, and ship it to purchasing and purchasing their, their charges to, to get the, the prices down. <laughs> but if it's less than, than uh, $40,000, the CFO of the company won't uh, be required to approve it. And if he won't approve this pilot, even if the pilot is successful, when we come to him with the request for the $200,000 uh, for the full deployment, he would say, I don't know this company. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. This is not in the budget. I need this guy to sign in for the pilot so he could be, he would feel involved in the process. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So I'm going back to the Israeli guy, telling him to write 50. He ends up writing 50. Uh, 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 he sends it to the, uh, to the American guy. Two months later, we get the PO. The PO is for $9,000. What? <laughs> I'm looking at the PO, calling the Israeli guy, asking him, what? He says, no, someone from purchasing called me up and shouted at me and told me they would never buy it even for a $5,000 and so on. So I decided that $9,000 is good enough. What? <laughs> <laughs> I told him, why didn't you call me? He said that the guy from purchasing shouted so hard and he told me that I had like 12 hours to give him an answer or something. So I just responded and say, sure, we'll do it for, for this. You gotta start using more high pressure tactics. <laughs> that's, that's wild. So this is, this is just some of the stuff. And, and there, are, uh, there are so many, so many other stories. Most of them I'm just... Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's well, always how it goes, I mean. I, I feel like that's kind of one of the uh, downsides. This kind of work is like the, the most interesting stuff that I've worked on. I can't talk about, and I feel like it's got to be similar with you. But it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Every customer is a different domain, a different technology, a different product. In many cases, uh, especially when these are companies who are successful in Israel and just doing their first steps in the States, uh, you need to learn to uh redefine the value proposition because in many cases the value proposition they they make in israel and the value proposition they can offer in the states is different as an example one of the things that really shocked me when i started working here is that i've learned that the healthcare providers don't really care uh about the quality uh of of uh of the treatment for the patient. It sounds horrible, but at the end of the day, they look at either they can cut costs by doing it uh, either cheaper or quicker. Yep. Or uh, if you can change the, the insurance code, upgrade the insurance code, it's of interest. But if you're, if you, That's interesting. If you offer at the same thing at the same price with a better value, they won't take it because of the risk associated with deploying this thing. It might not work out. And currently they have something that works out. And realizing that uh, uh, the companies needs first to approach the payers and convince the payers that this is of a better value. So either... Meaning the insurance companies. Sorry? The payers, the insurance companies. Yeah, so, 
So yeah. if the payer is deciding that this is uh, uh, of, uh, of a better thing, they would give it uh, a different, uh, a different uh, okay. uh, code that would provide some better, uh, some better uh, uh, remuneration of the hospital. Or it would provide other incentives for the, the hospitals to, to use this uh, a specific product or, or technology. And in Israel, in Israel, the, the vetting system of what comes into the healthcare system is so different. Israel is like, uh, in, the, in its origin, is like more a socialist uh, uh, a country. And we have this uh, a crazy, wonderful process uh, uh, that Israel has a, a social security uh, a basket of uh, healthcare uh, uh, things. Interesting. That, that is being updated every year. And every year when they update what's included in the insurance, there's like a round table of the medical device and uh, uh, pharma companies, yeah. the Ministry of uh, Healthcare, the hospital and the HMOs, and the, and the people. Yeah. And everybody sits around and, and, and all kinds of specific lobby groups of specific uh, patient types because you know, there are all kinds of uh, life-saving uh, uh, medicines that are not in the, in the uh, basic insurance and yeah. special groups want to put them inside the, this thing. And this round table is discussing what's, what is going to be put in the, in the basket and what's going to be pulled out of the basket because a lot of technologies and products become obsolete and yeah, you have a, a, a better better and cheaper and faster uh, uh, technologies around. So a, a part of the secret sauce is not only to bring new things into the insurance, but to kick out things that you don't really need or all kinds of problems that are already not there. Uh, That's um, interesting, because I feel like around here, at least with medication, stuff just gets kicked to a lower pay tier. I don't know if it gets thrown out. Like, I mean, I, I've never tried to get on penicillin script filled, but I'm sure you could, and it wouldn't cost anything. It's been around for so long. My, my dad is, is a surgeon, and he said when he was in med school, they told everyone uh, two things. One is there was no such thing as a free lunch, and the other one is in 10 years, 90% of what we taught you will be obsolete. And I'm sure I'm getting the numbers wrong, but it was something like ridiculous like that. And so I, I feel like it makes sense to pull things out of what's covered. And it must happen here, too. I just... Give me an example of something, I guess, that, that used to be covered that has decided shouldn't be covered by insurance anymore. All kind of, uh, all kind of uh, ultrasound. Uh, for example, you used to have uh, uh, a huge ultrasound uh, uh, systems that people will go and you would have an te ultrasound technician that would do the thing. And today you have, you have all kind of handheld uh, 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 USB plugged uh, things that yeah. are being processed in, uh, in your computer. Yeah. So, and, and you look at what, at what you have in the, if the HMOs or if the, the, the providers would get well compensated for the work of the technician, yeah. they would still send the people to, to go through the, all the machines instead of having the motivation to push a, a cheaper equipment to be done by the doctor at the po doctor, doctor's appointment. Yeah, well, you don't need a whole other person there for no reason. So, okay. so, so, so. This or, or all kind of uh, think of technology. Uh, in, in many cases, you have upgrades that do that do uh, uh, fuse all kind of processes that were dispersed. And once you have that upgrade, why should anyone pay for those obsolete uh, obsolete things? Yeah. And and and, and you want you want uh, the system to improve so. So it's not that you don't mind either they do this or that. You want to cut out the obsolete uh, processes so it would make everybody get the, the, the best, uh, the best uh, uh, possible uh, 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 outcomes, techno outcomes yeah. technology. Just more efficient you know, procedures in, in hospitals. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm also, I'm dating an uh, operating room nurse right now, and, and she's told me some horror stories about like, just different inefficiencies in the operating room, and none of it would be present, prevented by that, but just, you know, certain surgeons asking for tools they don't need, or, you know, just 
some of them being high maintenance and so requiring like extra nurses or extra technicians that you know somebody else might not need but i guess it's never going to be perfect <laughs> you can make it better and you can try to work toward you know more efficient use of resources you're never going to achieve perfection and so i don't think there is such a thing as perfection because yeah. uh because uh, there is also a certain uh, a certain uncertainty embedded in the system uh, when when the, when they build they build the, the first uh, uh, like modern highway in Israel it's called the Ayalon Highway okay uh, they they built it uh, it's it's built on top of uh, of a in Israel there aren't real rivers but on a, <laughs> on top of what we Israelis call call a river and. And Picturing they, a creek in America. A creek. Uh, it's, it's not a creek. It's, it's bigger than a creek, but it's not really, really a, a, a river. And when they built it, they had, need, had to take a, a decision about how high they want uh, the highway to run over that uh, 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 that river. And and they made a calculation, and it, it, they, it ended up that uh, it's going to have one, one flooded day every 20 years <laughs> by the... By the you know by the weather patterns that uh, but I'm the, sure they saved an astronomical amount of money by putting it where they did as and, as and as if they if, if they pushed it a little higher in, in order to make it once every 40 years it's gonna would have cost them another billion dollars because yeah, it's like a, a, a very long uh, thing and and the first year they ran that road uh, they had like five days of full flooding <laughs> and there was one person killed in the flooding because uh, uh they got stuck they got stuck on the highway and got stuck in the car and the car uh, went under the under the water yeah so and, and there was like a public outcry of how how could you design such a thing at the end of the day, if, if they designed it better, they might have uh, uh, they different would... public outcry of why no no they, so they, they might have not uh, had money to to be to, to to get uh, new uh, uh, operation rooms into certain hospitals because you know you have a certain amount of, of yeah. uh, How public die because of that yeah, yeah. That, was, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Should we like circle back and go more into just what we're what our work is and talk more about? No, I I, I think I think we we went through the through some of the examples. Maybe maybe I would mention uh, one more program which we we started uh, 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 connecting companies to, and I mentioned it when we spoke spoke earlier. It's called Bird B I R D. Oh yeah, it's I a, a, a B National uh, uh, fund that uh, urges. Israeli and and American companies to do joint uh, commercial R and D projects, and it's willing to uh, finance fifty percent of the project and up to uh, one million or one and a half million uh, uh, dollars. And we've already matched uh, uh, some pairs of companies. And the, the idea is, if you have a specific pain or specific need that uh, that you would love to have. Uh, a partner that might work with you on uh, on developing a product that uh, that uh, answer that uh, that uh, need the, the that uh, a grant program can uh, uh, hedge your risk by financing uh, uh, some of the some of the some of the cost and the idea is that if uh, if you end up uh, uh, having a commercial product you pay royalties until you pay back the 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 grant Clever. and and if you if you end up uh, failing in the project you don't need to to pay the the grant back so so from that aspect uh uh, uh 412 by 972 one of the things we help companies do is understand what they are looking for help them find the right uh, israeli partner uh help them uh, structure a conceptual project with that partner and and go and uh, apply for the program. And another nice thing about that program is that uh, 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 the, the grant proposal is made of two phases. The first one is you uh, just submit a five-pager executive summary of what you want to do and some background information about the, com about, uh, the two companies. And the, the, the BIRD uh, team reviews the, the proposals and and some of them they decide to to pass and some of them they approve and only if you're approved then you need to do the 50 pages uh, detailed uh, uh, 
proposal. So again, in terms of uh, overhead, it's first you know that uh, uh, it makes sense for the bird committee to to finance you, yeah. and only then you sit down and write the full proposal. That's pretty awesome. And and they have like a, a, a two two times a year, like on March and September. These are the the application date for the general program, but they have also a, a dedicated program for energy innovation. They have a dedicated program for healthcare, for uh, homeland security. So, if 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 you're if 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 you're interested in finding a good match and getting a, a nice grant, uh, 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 talk to me. But yeah. e even if you don't, so this is for U.S. companies or Israeli companies that want to pair with a company in the other country and pursue uh, an idea that's commercially viable for $1 million price matching from the Israeli government? Mm -hmm. no, it's cool. not the Israeli government. By oh, the way, the, the pot is 50% Israeli government, 50% uh, US government. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> that's cool, though. So if, once you're identified as viable, what's your percentage of, of kind of closing once you write the 50 page? So I'm assuming that's not riskless. Like there's still a chance you won't get so, it. So the, 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 the statistics that they provide is that 30-35% uh, of the applicants get the money. I'm not sure if it's the, the applicants of the executive summary or the, the final program. Okay. But, but, but we do, we, we, I, think, I think that uh, uh, we've been filing, this is like I think the fourth, uh, we, 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 I've been helping companies to file and this is the fourth cohort uh, now. Uh, there is an application. We, we applied three, three, three times already. One got a grant of $1 million. Uh, and now, now we have uh, another grant in the pipeline. But I think I'm starting to get a sense of what the bird, uh, the bird team is seeking. Yes. And also, as they are friends, they are willing to look at the, at the drafts of the proposals before we submit them. That's a huge advantage. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they gave, give us feedback so, so we can calibrate the 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 proposals to answer the the things that they think that uh, reviewers would be concerned about yeah that's awesome i mean that's tremendous well uh you heard it here first or second if you already knew it <laughs> contact Dallenbar. what's a good way for people to get a hold of you so we have a website uh, uh which is 412x972.com uh you can find me on linkedin uh, my email is gal at 412x972.com. Uh, so, and, and there, there are my, the, my contact uh, details are on the website. Uh, and I love, I love to meet new people, speak with them, learn about what they do. Even if there's nothing currently to do, if I know about you and I come across a wonderful opportunity later on, I can circle back to you and tell you, listen, I just came across this wonderful opportunity that might uh, resonate with what you're doing. And uh, so happy to learn, happy Excellent. to communicate. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. I think that's a great place to come. Thank you. It was Check a pleasure. Check out 412 by 972, everyone. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Yeah.